Corner. Today we have Nicole Durant on the show. She's a very good friend of mine and she's also the owner of His Daughter Ministries. Today we are going to be talking about biblical womanhood and the realities of it. So you know it can get really hard to be a woman and to live for Christ in this day and age. So today we're going to talk about the realities of this and the hardships and basically what it looks like from our perspective to walk out this biblical womanhood. So Nicole, tell us a little bit about your history, about your testimony, about how you came to faith. Bruh. Grace upon grace upon grace like that could go on forever like yeah. that's really what my Christian walk looks like mm -hmm. um I found I actually live in the Bible Belt you already know so it's like there's a church on every corner I grew up in the church mm -hmm. kind of but I really didn't know what the gospel was and really have an understanding of what the gospel mm -hmm. was and it wasn't until I went to ground zero like <laughs> you I heard that solid gospel yeah. preach and it really convicted me and um, that's when the Lord saved me and like this process of changing happened but I was still in the sinful flesh you guys and so my flesh and this Holy Spirit yeah. were at war and so like yeah it's been real out here <laughs> but it's just like it's a beautiful thing because God is really sanctifying mm -hmm. me that's what the Christian walk like that's a beautiful thing that God graces us with is sanctification not only salvation but yeah. sanctification where he's like really setting me apart and making me more like him and like really carrying his character truly um from the inside out so yeah. yeah at what point did it hit you that you were like done with your old life that God was really pulling you out of it it was really out at ground zero like yeah. I really saw the ugliness of my sin and how like the world was not it like yeah. at all and I started to pick up the Bible and read about God for myself and really say, see what he has to say about this life because that's what the Bible will teach us it will yeah. show us him and it will show us instruction as well mm -hmm. and so I started to see just the folly of my life yeah. like and yeah. like bro this is trash and yeah. like that's when I really just had that that kind of revelation mm -hmm. of like okay the way of the lord is the only way like that's that good. i can even live <laughs> yeah that's really good so today in our age it's like as a woman there are pressures that we face every single day um, what are a few struggles that you think that we face daily i think especially in the christian community yeah we have this proverbs 31 women woman mm -hmm. idea of biblical womanhood and I just want to say, biblical womanhood is from Genesis to Revelations. It's not just yeah. Proverbs 31. It's a beautiful thing, but we only get a snapshot of perfection. Mm -hmm. And that's it. We don't see any flaws. We don't see, like, the temptations and the things that women really go through. Yeah. And so, like, we're faced with life. Like, like, man, women, we have, I'm going to get real personal. <laughs> Guys, just close your ears. We <laughs> have PMS. And yeah. that's a real thing for me. Like, yeah. the Lord, like, really has been sanctifying me through yeah. my emotions. And yeah. just dealing with it, like, up oh, that time of month is coming. Yeah. Like, I'm about to be tripping. And then, like, denying my flesh and really yeah. conforming my thoughts to, like, what God says and mm -hmm. what is truth. Like, that's a struggle. And that's a real yeah. struggle women deal with. And yeah. I, honestly, I don't hear a lot of people really talk they about it. They don't. Honestly. Like, that's a real thing, though. They like, don't. I do it personally. And you know what's crazy? What? I googled this looking for an article, looking for help, wow. and I found nothing, guys. Wow. Nothing from a Christian perspective about PMS. And I'm just sitting here like, bruh, yeah. is this me or like... <laughs> Like, am I, only, am I the one that's crazy out here? Yeah. Like, literally. And it sucks because no one discusses PMS. No one discusses how it will truly affects us biologically, mentally, yeah. emotionally, and yeah. physically, you know? Yeah. So I think it's so important. I think that is something that we do struggle with, you know? Yeah. That, that isn't really called out in the Christian church. That isn't really called out in the body or really understood as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's, that's huge. I think for me, um, personally, a struggle that I feel like I've kind of found is that balance. You know, I feel like society calls us to be one thing and the Bible calls us to, to be one thing as well. Really? And finding that balance and saying that, man, I'm a daughter of Christ. I don't want to conform. Oh, I don't yeah. want to be swayed yeah. by society and yeah. the pressures of being yeah. beautiful or being wanted or yeah. being accepted. And I think that as women, we feel the wrath of that a lot because it's like, man, like, what is beautiful as a Christian woman? Yeah. What is, yeah. you know, what is not popular yeah. but what is accepted and okay to yeah. be you know so and sometimes i think about like we really need to think what shapes our definition of beauty True. like in real life because in the world's idea it's this big booty the contour really really popping yeah. and it's just Look. like it's just like outward or dormant we get so consumed mm -hmm. with it and like the lord is really truly about what is your character yeah. like who you are and god like that's truly where mm -hmm. we'll find beauty but that temptation is really it's really real. there yeah to like conform to the the world's idea of mm -hmm. what true beauty is like yeah i 100 percent agree with it's so real now like she said it's the heart you know it's truly that heart that is that we should be striving to make beautiful because yeah. that's what God looks yeah. at. Like, and it's just not 
let, let's say, be clear it's just not being a good person because mm -hmm. you know that true beauty is not being just a good person yeah. it's a heart that's conformed to Christ being mm -hmm. trained changed and transformed by yeah. God that's where beauty is mm -hmm. because I think sometimes like oh I'm a good person so I'm beautiful yeah. no it's a heart mm -hmm. that is truly in God that mm -hmm. is beautiful because we see that our good works are like filthy rags. Yeah. <laughs> like that's Isaiah. Literally, like look literally. it up, Google it. Like that's real life. So it's yeah. like true beauty is truly found in mm -hmm. Christ, in God. Like that's the only place that it can be found. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree. I think that the heart is truly where we should be focusing on. And it's, sometimes it is hard to, like she said, not be tempted to sway Girl. in our in our lust of the eye like oh yeah this girl got this and that yeah. let me go do this and it, yeah it, let me go do this and that which i mean of course in moderation might be okay yeah, but yeah, i think that when we with. truly lust after these things like man i have to have that or i need this to feel fulfilled that's where the problem starts to inch in slowly and i think that that's how we start wavering in our faith yeah we we'll start wavering in our moral beliefs in like, yeah in what we truly believe in yeah compromise starts to happen little by little um in this little bubble of desiring what another woman has or desiring yeah. what women in the world have as well yeah. so I think that it's always careful to like always like withdraw you yeah. know back it up yeah and just reflect yeah reflect because it's like why am I doing what I'm doing who is it for who, yeah. who is it glorifying God I think these are questions we should always be asking ourselves and it's not like a oh legalism type thing but no I want to please God with my life and yeah. I want to please God with what I do and also yeah. just not for us and for God but for others for our brothers and sisters in Christ you know yeah. we don't want to lead them astray with our lives so we need to make sure that we're doing what we can do to the most that we can do as Christians or as humans to make sure that it doesn't happen the pressure for marriage oh yes Singles and womanhood, like yeah. they think like marriage is the promised land. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all, it's not. Jesus is. <laughs> <laughs> like is. there's like serious pressure in the Christian community mm -hmm. like marriage is promised to everyone yeah. and like you and have reached the pinnacle mm -hmm. of your Christian womanhood yeah. once you're married but it's just like there's so much more to the Christian life than just being married yeah. even Paul like admonishes us mm -hmm. to be single if you can because mm -hmm. there's so much more room for activities in real yeah. life like to live a life fully mm -hmm. for Christ and so that pressure like to be married it's real is real it's, real. it's really yeah, real. it's only more real and becoming more real because um women who are married are deemed higher than those who are single mm -hmm. and that places somewhat of a competition or a desire to be bumped up in status i'd say yeah. as a christian woman I so agree. that's kind of where that tension comes in like yeah. well she's married and she's more glorified because of she's married yeah. and she has kids and she has a husband but me that's a single really isn't looked yeah. at or you know applauded for my life yeah and what's so. ironic it's ironic because if we think about two like people who are used greatly in the bible i'm just gonna name something mm -hmm. jesus single <laughs> single paul single like he is like yeah. um, like not the foundation of our faith but he's responsible for like well, over half the new testament yeah. and this man was single and like he's still like yeah known for it today because of the work that he did for the lord and i'm sure if he was married it would have mm -hmm. been a lot harder so there's nothing wrong with being married but i think the temptation of idolizing mm -hmm. relationships and marriage is really real in christian womenhood yeah. that in this um walk we have three enemies mm -hmm. we have the world mm -hmm. our flesh yeah. and the enemy literally and so we have to understand like there's going to be tons of temptation mm -hmm. there's going to be that temptation to compare yourself and find your value in yes. other things instead of christ mm -hmm. you know and so it's important that we always draw back to the word of god and be reminded like nothing is a value truly a value yeah. true true value outside of jesus christ yeah. and like it sounds so like cut and dry but it's the truth you guys mm -hmm. the creator of all things like he is the one that we can truly find any type of value yeah. in and you know what i'm saying yeah and i think as christian women we do struggle with that sometimes like you know will these possessions give me value will this man bring me value will these necessities bring me value but it's like no they won't bring you value the only one that you can find your value in your true value in is in christ and if we truly plant ourselves on that truth begin to believe this it may not be an overnight thing but yeah. through the renewal of our minds and through telling ourselves like man like i am enough in christ i do not need to acquire a man yeah. i do not need to acquire yeah. somebody else's man like you are <laughs> I had to. It's real life though. I it's real to. life. <laughs> you do not need to acquire somebody else's man. You just don't. Yeah. You know, so it's like you don't need 
to look be looking for more material possessions yeah. whenever you're craving for value you yeah. need to be looking for more spiritual adornment by god because that's the only one that can truly satisfy you and truly give you your value yeah. and truly keep you from all that truth when we do fall when we're pursuing these mm -hmm. things that fall reminds us like okay this yeah. ain't the way, <laughs> like, the way. folly reminds us that our way is not the yeah. way so important like as Christian women just to be aware of the devil's you know vices and yes. be aware of the things that he uses to ensnare us. I feel like sometimes the reasons why we don't get invested in sound doctrine or knowing the word of God for ourselves or being very scripturally sound is because we're lazy. Yeah. Bro. We're lazy. Lazy is a real thing. We're lazy because he has provided resources for you to get the word to learn the word and to walk by it so yeah. i think it's important that we remember that man as a woman you need to make sure that you're invested in seeking out your spiritual growth and invested in walking up this life by yeah. faith because if you don't do it then i mean no one's gonna force you to do yeah. it so yeah i agree our culture definitely cultivates compromise and laziness like we have these bite-sized things videos that we watch if it's too long like we'll see how, how long is this and then we'll stop it even yeah. like on the social media age and so it's really important to fight that that mm -hmm. that fleshly desire like to have it quick and easy and right now like literally um wrestle with the word of god yeah. and like really read the entire chapter research the context because context brings the scripture so much more to life and you really find a deeper understanding mm -hmm. okay what is paul saying here like when you understand mm -hmm. the cultural perspective around it all and it's just like as christians we want it easily we want it right now but i tr tell you the true treasure is when you actually mine through the riches of scripture and actually find the gold yeah. like and it's gonna take time like if you think about people who mine for treasure like it's not like oh i digged in one spot and there it is like <laughs> No, you're going to have to keep digging and digging and really dig deep into the word of God and really like know what the word of God yeah. is for yourself because that will protect you in yeah. real life because false doctrine, false teachers is so a real thing and I think we sleep on that and we think that everything is good, you guys, mm -hmm. even if it's dressed in Christianity, like with yeah. a mask of Christianity, but no, like there's real wolves out here like in, in lions mm -hmm. looking to devour like in real life and so we have to know like what the truth is we need to protect ourselves and the only way to protect ourselves is of course through the holy spirit and the word of god i think that it's something that as christian women we need to be uh, mindful about and make sure that we're not the ones believing these um cliche statements or these pulled from scripture out of the wrong place not meaning the right thing yeah and to truly seek the word for yeah. ourselves and to grow on these real truths yeah i 100 percent yeah. agree and um another thing that i was saying just because someone's sincere doesn't always mean that they're right yeah. and like that's a that's yeah something we have to deal with also in our mm -hmm. heart we can be sincere that's another thing in my walk is that i've realized is that i've been wrong yeah. before like it's been a it's been a journey like we're not gonna know be well versed in the scriptures yeah. when we first give our life to christ yeah. we're gonna grow we're, we're gonna, gonna mature grow. and we may be naive to certain mm -hmm. things but the one thing about a christianity is is you're growing yeah that's how you know a healthy is a healthy christian is if you're growing and our perception is so limited we can't see we can't see all there is to see we yeah. don't know and we may never know all there is to know because yeah. we're not god yeah so i think that it's so important to not only find one source as a person to listen to to know to believe in to literally you know soak in all they are saying it's so important to go to scripture guys i think it's good to have people to be inspired yeah. by yeah, i think I, it's amazing to see other christians like wow you know i love crystal's channel or i love nicole's channel or i love whoever you love's channel but there is always that necessity to go back to scripture and say hey i know crystal is a human hey yeah. i know nicole is a human yeah, we're I'm all fallible i we're, got blood in my I know we got blood in our <laughs> we're all fallible and we That's may not always be right yeah. you know so yeah. um scripture should first and foremost be your first check original like greek where i don't mm -hmm. know if it's greek or not, latin i don't know mm -hmm. but it actually means measuring wrong. yeah scripture is our measure to determine anything yeah. is this right or is this wrong let's look to scripture scripture mm -hmm. has answered questions that haven't even been invented yet bruh mm -hmm. like so it's so important that we that is we our to, place we go for christian women who are trying to kind of find this biblical womanhood that are trying to live this life out um what would you say to them what would what advice would you give them that do desire to walk this way to live it out 
it's a lot of prayer. That's number one. That, I mean, that's it's, it seems so cliche, but it is so true. Prayer, knowing the word of God, because we cannot live this life. That's our sword. Like, that's the only way we can really live biblical womanhood is by knowing what the Bible says. Yes. And then another thing that I have learned recently is community is so important, bro. Like, so, so if you ever find yourself lacking in zeal and lacking in fire, like, surround yourself with people of God that are really living this Christian life, yeah. like, gospel pattern life, because they will convict you of your sin and your laziness, and that fire will get, like, literally riled back yeah. up in walking with the Lord and just having godly examples around mm -hmm. you. It's vital. Like, don't neglect the meeting up together. Yeah. Like, it will stir you up in real life. Yeah. And so, I think those are three components that we should really, like, work with in order to actually live this life out know the scriptures actually know what biblical womanhood is pray about it and then be around people who are actually living it out yeah. as an example i think those are keys yeah all right so i hope you guys have learned a ton about biblical womanhood and what it looks like in our lives i pray that this video encourages you and helps you in your walk if you enjoyed this video make sure you share it subscribe comment and like this video make sure you check out nicole's channel as well i'll link all her information in my description bar below so you guys can go stalk her and yeah just <laughs> yeah, yeah and stalk her <laughs> all right i'll see you guys next time on crystal's corner bye y'all <laughs> three, three, two, one. I'm Ashley. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But... <laughs> okay, so, woo, okay, action.